Welcome everyone, this is Viking, and today we're going to talk about forgetfulness, specifically mine. There was a whole thing that I meant to mention in the first video and didn't. I got this thing on active pause right now, because the only way to get a clear view of this compass is to pull the stick out of the way, and it, uh, it often doesn't work on the ground. I mean, sometimes it seems to, but uh, basically this, this compass doesn't seem to like to spin freely unless you're in the air. So let's take a closer look at it. Um, in the first video, we did... I'm just going to freeze my view here. I'm going to stop pressing the wrong button and freeze my view here. Okay. So, in the first video, we took a look at this compass and talked about how uh, if you, uh, you want to... You know, if 30 is to your left and you want to go towards 30, you actually turn right because the compass is backwards. But it also gets a little bit decalibrated, and sometimes you got to correct it. Um, usually not by more than, like, 10 degrees, but that's enough to throw you off course. So, the way we, uh, the way we correct it is... Initially, this thing is set up so that north is right in line with this little vertical stick. Not the white thing that's off to the side, but the, but the dark thing that's hard to see. And the way you use this compass, the ring doesn't rotate on its own, but the, uh, the white cross here and the white line there, those, uh, those do rotate, and the, uh, the bar with the cross on it is north. So what you do is you rotate this guy, until it uh, lines up with the cross, and it is it is hard to get a good view of that. I sort of generally try to to make the yellow line parallel to the cross, but when it's in other positions, sometimes it's you're better off trying to line it up with the uh, with the uh, with the uncrossed white sticks. It's it's really not perfect. I'm just gonna give you the information, and uh, if you find a better way to deal with it, by all means, leave that in the comments. So, now that we've got north pointing in line with the crossed one, that, uh, that lets us use this stick to read um, about 276. And we're going to compare that reading of 276 with the true heading that we get from the F2 view. Along the bottom bar, it says 268 under HDG. 276, 268, why are they different? Because the magnetic declination in this area is about 8. Uh, so actually that lines up really well. I'm usually off by a degree or two. This time I lucked out and, uh, and got it. So basically, um, we, uh, to, to, to get the true heading, what we do is subtract 10 because it's 8 degrees west. Or subtract 8 because it's 8 degrees west. Um, so for 276, it's 268, and so I will dial this guy over to 268. And now I've got a true heading on this one, at least until it decalibrates. If you think this one might be way off, this is what you refer back to, but most of the time your stick is right there, and if I unfreeze my view, like, do I want to be cranking my head around like this? while I'm actually flying, I really, really don't. It's, uh... It's not super ergonomic. I mean, you put that to, to either side. I mean, there's space here, man. They, they could have put it here, and we'd be able to see it while we're flying, and see if it agrees with this guy. As it is, this is the guy that you can see clearly, and uh, this is the guy that is actually telling you the truth. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to cover. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.